Yeah, Richie, uh, you know, what, uh, what, what, uh, congratulations, but, uh, uh just want to think what, tell the people here what you think you can add to the Falcons and so forth. A dog, short and sweet, man. You're going to get a dog. <laughs> I'm ready to work, man. I never thought this could happen, to be honest with you, but I'm forever grateful to Atlanta organization, man, taking that chance on me. Um, you about to get a playmaker, you know, a leader, um, on, on and off the field, that type of guy. You know, I really care about every aspect of the game, and Atlanta's about to see that. And, yeah, I see you got uh, 290 tackles and 17 passes defensed and 10 interceptions. How do you find the ball? Film study. You find the ball a lot. Film study, doing okay. the right things, trusting in my teammates, trusting in the game plan. They all go hand in hand. But the ball just love me, though. Maybe maybe I just got a special relationship with it. I don't know. <laughs> Troy McElhinney? Hi, Richie. Congratulations, and we'll see you in Atlanta soon. Uh, I, I don't mean to put any pressure on you by saying this, but with the way that this safeties group is rebuilding in Atlanta, it almost seems that you're the future of this position group. When you think about it in that way, what does it mean to you that the Falcons see that future in you? An absolute blessing. Uh, I never heard somebody tell me I'm the future. You know, like, those are the first time I heard words like that. You know, and uh, I don't take them lightly. I'm going to come in there. I'm going to do exactly what I've been doing my whole life. I'm just working hard, keeping my head down. And, you know, like I said, leading on and off the field. So, I don't know, man. I, I can't even get these words right right now. I'm just excited, man. <laughs> Love it. Also, you know, you're joining a, a defense that is being led now by Dean Pease. What do you know about Dean Pease? And he really does seem like he likes to get his safeties kind of all over the field. So are you excited about joining that? Most definitely. That's what that's 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 my key right there. Hold on. I got, I've been trying to escape my family members. All right. All right I'm ready. I've been trying to escape. They've been, they've been all over me. But um. But yeah, man, um, that that's the key to my game, you know, being able to line up multiple spots and still be productive in multiple spots, you know, not just being a guy out there. Uh, and I I took that with me to the Senior Bowl, and uh, that was one thing that I wanted to showcase at the Senior Bowl. And I I ended up getting a whole nother spot at corner, so you know that's that's a big part of my game, and uh, I pride myself on that. And and film study definitely helped me. Oh man. People keep calling me. And film study definitely helped me get an edge in that aspect, you know, being versatile and being able to be productive while being versatile. Michael Rothstein. Hey, Richard, congratulations. I want to hear something you just said, and I think it was your first answer, that you said you never thought this could happen. What do you mean by that? Like, are you, are you talking like get drafted, second round, go to Atlanta? What, what, do, you, what do you mean there? A team just believing in me enough, man, to just call my name on draft night. That's what I mean. Just, you know, something I just never thought would happen to me. You know, uh, I always had the dream. You know, I always had the passion for the game. But it's just like one of those moments where you just like, it's just super surreal, you know. It don't matter how how, how much hype you got behind you uh, or, or not. Like, it just don't matter. Like, when it comes to all that, just hearing your name called and a team, you know, putting on the cap something surreal and it's just something I just think what happened to me. Um, I, I came from a very humble beginning, you know, so coming from that, my journey all the way up to this point, I don't know, man, it's just something I just didn't think what happened to me. And I was listening to a podcast you did, I guess it was a couple months back and you talked about like the NFL players you watch. What is it that you take or, or pull from Eddie Jackson and from Minka and from Bayard when you're watching them that you've been able to add that might help you transition to the NFL? Just the way they command defenses, you know, their presence out there. Um, I like to see, like, uh, you can kind of get the, you kind of get a feel for how they read things. You know, you can see route combinations. I can kind of see visually where their eyes go. Uh, I can see how quick they react on certain routes. Uh, if they reacted on a route and it was wrong, how do they handle that the next time? Just things like that uh, to keep my game sharp, you know, just trying to, the guys that I emulate my game off of, if I want to be productive and, and, you know, stay consistent at the next level, and obviously they are doing those things, then I want to see what they're doing so I can try to, so I can try to do, with that, uh, do what they're doing, my bad. Kelsey, 
Hey, Richie. Um, my first question is, what did the Falcons say to you in terms of how they um, envisioned featuring you in this defense? Everything that I've read about you says you're very interchangeable, but I wondered if they had carved out a role for you that they told you about. Uh, I'll probably be a primary. Hold on. Hold on. I'm on interview. Hold on. They keep finding me. They keep finding me. They keep finding me. I might have to change location. But, uh, no, nah, I'll, I'll probably, uh, probably primarily be free safety, uh, of course. And then, uh, you know, probably come down, box a little bit, slot guy. Uh, but I think my main role would be free safety uh, on in the post, you know, being able to have vision uh, on everybody. And um, you just talked about um, you kind of finding a role at corner, but uh, your story is you came out of high school, um, not really no a known recruit. What do you think changed for you in terms of your career at UCF to get you where you are? And um, how did it feel to lose the Cincinnati Bearcats last year? Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Kelsey, <laughs> for reminding me of all the things I don't like to be reminded of. Me and but, d Letter uh, are nah, alone. <laughs> listen, listen, it's all good. I got a W against them. It's all good. It's all good. But, um, nah, uh, that was pretty tough on me. You know, coming out of high school, uh, I felt highly of myself um, in terms of what I did on the field. Uh, I made sure the, the grades was, you know, never a problem. It just felt like to me, like, it wasn't a reason I should have shouldn't have got those big offers, but it just didn't happen that way. So, you know, it was tough on me. Um, that's something I didn't really share with people at the time, but I've been able to, you know, to tell that story through this process. And when I got to college, I questioned myself a little bit. You know, that was part of the reason why I, my dream for the NFL kind of, it, it, it just, like, squandered a little bit because that as well as not making the plays I did in high school, I questioned myself, like, can I still do this? You know, uh, maybe maybe I was right to not get those big offers, um, those type of things. But I just went back to God, man, um, who got me to that point anyways. You know, um, God always been my corner, and he always kept me humble. Um, he gave me this platform. And really, <clears throat> really most important part is all my worries, my anxiousness, like all that. I give it to God and I just control what I control and that's what I did. So I just went to work um, and just, I was just being me. You know, I got a really good personality, so people say, and uh, just being me, hardworking, and the rest of it took care of itself. Jason Butt. Hey, Ricky, uh, congratulations. Um, you know, just sticking with that, you know, at what point during your time at Central Florida did you – did it change for you that that you, that the um, while you were doubting yourself, it flipped to where you started believing that that you could be the player that you are today, getting drafted here in the second round? Yeah, so it was with the the new coaching change. Um, we had Coach Frost uh, when I got in, and it went over to uh, Coach Hypo and his staff, and that staff just came in and basically said no position is is uh, is in stone right now. All positions up for grabs. We just want to see what you guys uh, look like, how you guys compete. And I said, hey, that's me. You know, I'm going to compete. Like, give me a shot. I'm going to compete. Uh, I don't care if I'm first, second, third, because at the time I was a young guy still. Um, and really, that was the same time where I just said, let me just go back to my foundation, which is God, and just went to work. So in that process of going to work, I found myself again. Uh, I was able to enjoy enjoy the game more. And like I said, the personality I've always been there. So every aspect was just hitting, you know, it was on, right. every aspect was on point. And, and uh, basically my confidence just came back. So that's, that's really what it is, short story. Right. And then um, during this pre-draft process, was there a moment where uh, you got a feeling that the Falcons ran on you pretty hard and that they, they wanted to take you with one of their early picks? Um, I can't say either way. But I can say I knew it was a need. Um, I did know we, we clicked well in all our interviews that we did. Um, they, you know, they gave me a little bit of defense. I was able to pick it up real quick. And they like, you know, they like me as a uh, – stop calling me. They like me as a – they like me as a player, obviously. But most importantly, you know, they praise my character. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, thank God for that, uh, the person I am. And it, it just messed, you know, so I was – my agents, like they, they've been telling me, like you coming to Atlanta, you coming to Atlanta, and I kind of, I kind of knew that though during COVID, I was like, yeah, I might be in Atlanta, like I definitely might be a Falcon, and look at that, man, I'm a Falcon, man. Awesome. All right, thanks, man. Congratulations. Thank you, Chase. Jeff Schultz. 
Yeah, just following that up, um, you said the coaches uh, gave you a couple plays, whatever, you talked to them about it. What Can I ask specifically what they talked to you about? In an interview? Yes. Or, no, it's yeah. Not yeah. Charles ain't like that. I, I'm sorry, I lost you. No, nah, I was just trying to say, um, <laughs> you know, pretty much it was, uh, you know, how I came up. Uh, trying to trying to just basically see how did I become the guy that I am today, you know uh, my background. Um, uh, we did talk football. Uh, you know we, we installed a few things and went over a little bit of my film. You know try to see where my head was, certain plays, things like that. But uh, the meetings were real smooth though. For the most part, for the most part, I say the beginning was mainly just about me, and then it's, it went into football. So. And then obviously players don't, you guys don't get to choose where you're going to be drafted. So you might be drafted by a great team or you might be drafted by a bad team or you might be drafted by a team that's going through a transition. The fact that like was alluded to early, you're coming to a team that's going to be going through some changes, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. How do you feel about that as a young player coming to a defense that's basically sort of going to be starting over to some degree? Uh, My life being full of challenges. And I take them head on. You know, I don't shy away from it. Um, I'm just my philosophy is just to work hard, uh, take coaching, and lead. You know, and and everything else, all my successes in life, being able to be take care, been taken care of by that philosophy right there, and having fun as well. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm coming in with the same mindset um, into this organization, and I'm trying to bring that same energy to the defense. And I know in my heart, uh, me doing that, you know, and being able to um, to lead the way I can, I think guys will, you know, jump on a bandwagon and then we can get this thing rolling in a positive direction. Thanks. Hi, you mentioned how um, uh, a coaching change at Central Florida led to an opportunity for you. Do you see a parallel to, uh, you know, following up on the last question, do you see a parallel to what's going on here at the Falcons where uh, a new staff can be uh, looking at everybody on the same page? Most definitely. So, so in college, the only thing that's different is guys are not paid. So the scholarship you give is the scholarship you give. You can only, you know, the players you got is the players you got. In the league, you can trade out guys. Uh, they're not producing. You can go get another stuff like that. So it is different in that format. But in terms of everybody being on the same level, same level and having the same opportunity to go out there and uh, make sure their name is is in a 32-man roster, uh, 52-man, my bad, 52-man roster, it's the same as college. So guys are definitely going to be out there competing. You know, we got a, we got a lot of young guys, and everybody want their name Everybody want their name to be in that 52-man roster. So it's a good opportunity for the, the starters to be pushed by guys who coming in and the guys who coming in to be pushed by the starters. But we all trying to beat each other out to make sure we get on the field. And you mentioned that you knew safety was a position of need for the Falcons. Um, I'm sure there's other teams also looking for for help at, at safety, but I guess um, it's kind of tough to have a greater opportunity than a team that's um, having to replace Ricardo Allen, Keanu O'Neill, Deontay Kazi. Uh, how uh, how much did that jump out at you that this was this was like a real prime opportunity for you? Yeah, uh, I did think about that. You know, a lot of guys, uh, you know, left the team. Um, and the the safety group, it is kind of small right now. Uh, I actually worked out with Eric Harris a uh, bunch at EXOs during my come on training. You know, we chopped it up a lot. And I think, like, my last week at EXOs, he ended up getting signed by Atlanta. You know, we, we were just, just chopping up, talking. And, and uh, he said, you know, it's a, it's a really great spot to be. Uh, he loved the staff. And he wanted me to be his teammate. And like I said, God made things happen, and he made that happen. And now we teammates, and I'm be Atlanta Falcon. Kelly Price? You mentioned Eric Harris there. Um, talk a little bit more about that relationship. Is that someone you know well? Has he been one of these people calling you here on your phone? <laughs> yeah, he's been calling. He's been blowing me up, too. Uh, we've been talking about this about two weeks, man, saying he wants me to be a Falcon. And I'll uh, be his teammate. Like I said, I, I click real well with, with people um, off of the field, you know, so he became like my big brother. Uh, I love I love that type of bond. 
and he knows you know, I'm responsible. I, I take care. Of, you know, I like to have fun, but I take care of uh, all the tasks that's at hand. So that just clicked, and me and him, kind of the same person. You know, we came from humble beginnings. Um, his a little more humble than mine, but we both came from humble beginnings, and we just wanted to be a part of a team together. And it's just crazy how it ended up happening like that. That's all I got. Thanks and congrats. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, Richie, I'm curious. You keep talking about your humble beginnings and how, you know, there were times where you were maybe overlooked. And I'm I'm just curious, was there ever a person maybe along the way, UCF, uh, someone not at UCF that kind of sat you down and was like, listen, you're an NFL caliber defender. Let's get this thing rolling. Was there one person that did that for you or was it just a gradual process? It's been so many great people in my life, um, you know, that's, that speak to me in that type of way. Uh, a lot to do with how I, how I handle myself off of the field. You know, a lot of people always call me a pro, you know, even going back to like freshman year of high school, um, you know, not being the one to party, uh, doing the extra work, you know, things like that. I've been doing this for a long time. So it's always been people in my life that's telling me that I can do it. And, um, you know, that opportunity is there for me if I just work hard enough and stay humble, true to, true to who I am. So I can't just say one person. Uh, it's been a lot, but uh, it's definitely been some that stuck out more than others. Okay, and then non-football related, I'm, I want to know what you know about the city of Atlanta and why you're excited to live there. Uh, yeah, during COVID, um, I signed my, agents, my, uh, my agency, and they're based out of Atlanta. And um, I was there for two or three months. Uh, just working out and uh, roaming the city, you know, and it's a little more busy than that than than Orlando in terms of like Orlando. We actually have parking, you know, we got parking in Orlando and we got theme parks and stuff like that. So it's gonna be a little different in that aspect. But, but the city life, you know, I, I've been in that for five years, and uh, I don't want to go back to. It. I came from uh, Lumberton, Mississippi, in my beginning, and that's about as country as you can get. You know, like it's like one lane roads and one one gas station, one fast food restaurant in that city. We only got Walmart, and uh, I love my city to death. Now I'm not I'm not bagging them, but I don't want to go back to that. You know, I want to keep staying in the city life, and that limit is definitely that. Tanitra. Hey Richie, I used to live in the Tampa Orlando area, so I feel you, and uh, definitely mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna love Atlanta compared. Trust me. But yeah. uh, just to kind of piggyback, but kind of go in a slightly slightly different direction, you talked about Eric Harris, and that's kind of a built-in mentor for you. But also, you have somebody in a secondaries coach like a John Hoke, who really has a reputation for developing young talent like Andrew Adams and and Chris Conti over with the Bucks. Now he's with the Falcons. So how is how important is it for you? or encouraging is it for you to have someone like that who's known to develop the young talent, especially because a lot is probably going to be asked for you to really begin to contribute to the secondary immediately. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to be a Falcon because of that guy, you know, uh, the whole staff. But that guy, man, just being able to put his hands on on people, um, certain players, and, and elevate their game, you know. And obviously, we came here to win. You know, so anything that I can work on or he sees that I can get better at, uh, I'm believe. you know, I'm a coachable guy anyways, but, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to back talk him at all. You know, I trust him hundred percent and look, we already built a uh, relationship in these interviews. So anything he tell me, yes, sir, like, let's do it. Like, it's going to make me better. I know it's going to make me better. He got proof of that. So I'm ready to get started with that. And a piggyback on Maria's Atlanta question in your time of being here, What's the most Atlanta thing for you that maybe you had heard about before you touched down in our city? And once you actually were here, you're like, oh, wow, that's very Atlanta. Oh, most Atlanta thing. Ooh. Man, let me think. I can't tell you my first thought, but. Have you had any of our wings? Yeah, yeah. Any wing yeah. stops? We didn't stop for sure. You know, uh, my agency actually signed on uh, Rick Ross. We became partners with Rick Ross. So we didn't stop for sure, definitely. And then uh, and then I'm going to say the slang. Like the slang, you know, I thought I had a good grip on it. But you go to Atlanta, it's completely different. You know, I had to catch up on that quick. So maybe the slang is very Atlanta. Very. Thanks. Christian Brewery. Uh, Richie, you know, 
you being drafted now, it's five straight years for UCF to have a player drafted, and it sounds like maybe Aaron and Tay will go after you. What's it mean for you to, to I guess, carry the baton for UCF and, and kind of continue to establish that brand here in Orlando? Well, let me ask you a question first, because uh, I haven't been paying attention. Did they get their name called yet, Tay and Aaron? Not yet that I've seen. Okay, okay, it'll be soon, it'll be soon. But uh, to answer your question, uh, just a blessing, man. Uh, you know, all these notifications have been popping up, a lot of those young guys, you know, uh, in, I'm not gonna lie, in throughout the process, just everybody saying, like, you deserve it so much, like, you, you stepped up, uh, was a big brother to us, a leader to us, like, all of them are just so happy for me, man, and, uh, you know, I don't take that for granted, because when I was a young guy, I, I wanted to look up, like, I wanted to be around the seniors. I wanted to be around the older guys because those are the guys who've been there, done that. You know, they, they had the failures, they had the successes. So I wanted to learn as much as I could so I didn't have to, you know, go through the bad things, um, experience it for myself, just learn from their mistakes. So for me to, you know, be in this light for them um, and that entire, you know, UCF Night Nation, uh, people just being proud of me, people just, just, just happy for me, man. Uh, it's just a blessing, man. Really ain't got no other words for it. It's just a blessing. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everybody. That's all the time we've got. Richie, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate all y'all. Thank you so much. Y'all see this falcon on my head? It's real. Mm -hmm. You feel me? We, we there. We in Atlanta. Let's do it. I'm ready to work. I'm happy. I'm going to get back to my, my family. So thank y'all so much for getting me away from them for a little bit. They were beating up on me. <laughs>